about drug education is it, it needs to start early because we need to be thinking not about just the knowledge about drugs but we need to be thinking about the skills and attitudes children need to be able to make those choices for themselves in the future. Research has shown that if drugs education can delay the time when children may experiment with drugs, then they're less likely to go on and seriously misuse drugs later in life. This programme takes a look at two West Yorkshire schools, both award winners for their approach to drugs education. We'll see how Saltair Primary and Riddleston St Mary's C of E Primary are working to deliver these critical life skills to their pupils. Drugs education is very much a part of personal and social education. It's part of growing up with respect for yourself and your own body and being independent and being able to say, I make the choices for my life. Each year, as I move through the school, the topics remain the same, but obviously what is taught is developed and built on, which hopefully will turn them into skillful, informed decision makers. St Mary's has enlisted the help of national charity Life Education Centres to help deliver their PSHE curriculum. Their mission is to work in partnership with schools to enable children to make healthy lifestyle choices with the help of specially tailored lessons in their mobile classroom. Everybody in. We'll make a row and then everybody else can follow. Jan Newman used to teach at St Mary's before joining Life Education. The PSHE programme tends to um, concentrate on life skills. It gives children a chance to um, talk about things that will really affect them how to value themselves and other people, how to ask for what they want, and also to talk about some of the things they will need to make choices about as they grow up. We'll take a look at how both schools are attempting to build the necessary knowledge and skills over the course of the primary education of the child. The groundwork begins as soon as the children start school, with an introduction to what makes their bodies special and worth looking after. Whoa. What do you need to stop you? Alison Sherratt is teaching a reception class at St Mary's. Well, we're going to have a look at some things today to see if we can remember all the things about what's it, what are inside our bodies. The objective of the, the, the whole thing is to actually teach the children to care for themselves and to make them realise that they're very special. What do you think those are? Skeleton's body. A skeleton's body. See if you can fit it onto the shadow. Which, where would it go on the shadow? Mm. Wow, that's <coughs> brilliant. Can anybody remember what those parts of your body are called? A cage. It is a cage. Well done, Connor. Can you say rib cage? Rib cage. The hope is that we help them to understand that their body is so very special that they won't misuse it by using drugs when they're older. Brilliant. What's inside our bodies? A brain. What else? Your tummy. And um, what's inside here that's helping you to live? Your heart. Heart, brilliant. Can anybody tell me what your brain does? It brings it to the heart to do the message. Brilliant. The brain says to your heart, I'm going to make you work. Yes. Can you breathe in? Wow, you grew, because all the air has gone inside your body and all that air has gone inside your lungs and into your blood and going round your body and making you very healthy and giving you lots of... Energy! We do a lot in this school to promote the idea in the children that each person is a very special and very different person. Can you see those funny little marks at the end of your fingertips? Yeah. You're the only person who has those shapes on your fingers because you're so special that those fingertips are just special to you. Nobody in the world has fingertips just like yours. Have there any video? Please get me a video, well remembered. We're gonna talk about how to keep our bodies happy, healthy, 
and safe. Okay, have you brought your body with you today? Yeah. Give, it, give it a bit of a hug. Because our bodies are really special. We look at the fact that whatever we put into our body, if it can digest, it will go into our blood and it will reach our brains. And that's why people tell us to eat healthy food. Because our brain and our body work best with healthy food, water and oxygen. Jan is making use of Harold the giraffe to find out what the year fours know about nicotine and alcohol. Yeah. Well, should I ask? OK. Harold said he's going to a party this weekend. He's really excited. Giraffes don't get invited to many parties. But his friends have said that for a bit of a laugh. They're going to take some beer and cigarettes to the party. And Harold's heard that these things are not very good. It's widely known that it isn't appropriate to try and scare children into not taking drugs. It doesn't work. Ultimately, they will make the choice for themselves because it's their body, they will make the choice. So we need to equip them with the skills they need to make those choices. Has anybody heard anything that might help Harold make his mind up about what to do for the party? Yeah. Go to the party but not touch the beer or the cigarettes. Right, OK, that would be a good idea, wouldn't it, Harold? Thank you. Cigarettes can kill you. Have you heard that? Yeah. yeah. What's the drug inside cigarettes called? Has anybody heard? Yes, that's right, yeah. And a drug is anything that changes how a person's brain works. A lot of the work we do in PSHE is not academic based. We're not asking children to write anything down. We're asking children to think for themselves, to question some of the values and things they might have heard and actually then come up with their own opinions on things. OK, Harold said that he's decided he's going to go to, to the party because he loves dancing so much. But he's not going to uh, drink any beer or smoke any cigarettes because he says he's going to be different from his friends. Is it OK to make our own minds up and our own decisions sometimes, do you think? And do you think that's what makes us special? Yeah? We let them have time to speak and give their opinion. We do try to make children feel really great about having a go and speaking. And we also avoid saying to children, do you know anything? Because sometimes children might say, no, I don't know it. But they might have an idea that they'd like to give you, but they're not sure if it's right. Why is that? Have you heard anything about those things? We would say, has anybody heard anything? That's right. <laughs> or could anybody give us any ideas about? And so they feel like they can have a go without actually being wrong. Okay, so Jan is introducing the Year Sixers to some of the facts about drugs. And body works. Shauna mentioned um, alcohol. And alcohol is in some drinks. What drinks is alcohol in? Anybody heard? Beer and yeah. A good way of introducing a talk about legal and illegal drugs would be in a discussion group so that children can give their ideas and thoughts. And it would be suitable to ask them what drugs they'd heard of, rather than introduce any drugs to children that they might not have heard about, and therefore it isn't appropriate really to talk about them. Although it is recommended practice that we talk about nicotine and alcohol and medicines, you need to go with what the children know. The main aim should be to, to find out if children have got any misconceptions. So why are those drugs legal if we think they're not safe? Why does if you don't take too many of what the legal drugs and they can't do you as much harm as if you take like just a little bit of the illegal drugs. Right, yeah. But when these drugs first came into the country a long time ago, uh, people didn't know they were harmful and so they weren't made illegal. And so we need to put those things right so children have the correct information. Uh, drugs can affect people in different ways. But have you heard of this word? Risk. Yeah. Yeah. You're trying to provide them with information and options in order for their choices to be the right ones when they get old enough to be around without adults or parents or teachers there to guide them. So once the pupils have the information, how do you equip them with the skills to make those choices? One method used by both Jan and Liz Wilkinson at Saltaire is role play. I think it's really important that we give these social competency skills. They don't come naturally to everybody. They can be taught. 
So they would, we would be looking at assertiveness. We'd actually look at ways you can be assertive. Go on, have a drink. Have a drink. Is it quite hard, even though we're only pretending? Do you think it would be even harder in real life? Yeah. You find it quite easy to pick on one person? Yeah. yeah. OK, OK, brilliant. OK, what we're going to do this time, can you do exactly the same, but this time Ashley's going to come in and help you? At first, I think it's a good idea to actually give children a script, actually say, oh, you could say this and you could say that. And then if they're ever in that situation, they've actually said it before and they might be able to repeat it. And so we would hope that they'd have another go at the bits we've done, but then take it further, give them different situations and also get them to think of their own words. So they sort of are happy that they're using words they're comfortable with as well. And last lesson, you thought up some kind of little scenarios that we could role play to do with situations and smoking where you might have to make some decisions. We need to make children realise it's okay to be different from your friends. It doesn't mean you're going to lose your friends. Can we say no in a really um, friendly way? And that's about being assertive. You and your friends are having a sleepover. Whilst your friend's parents pop out for an hour, your friend suggests that you all try a cigarette. What do you do? Okay. Bye, Mum. What should we do? I've got these cigarettes. Do you want one? Yeah, sure. Do you want one? Well, my granddad died of smoking, so I don't really... It's not as if it's going to do it to you. Yeah, like it never strikes twice. Could. Oh, anyway, what be about smell? Oh, yeah, the smell, Tristan. What about it? It stinks the house down. Are you two just going to wimp off? Let's yeah. forget about the cigarettes and play on my new PS2 game. All right, then. I think role play is useful in, in any form of PSHC because I think it gives the children the opportunity to practice situations which might occur, but they can practice them in a safe, secure environment. Did we notice anything about the movement of Jack? He moved towards um, to Jack. Right, what do you think that indicated, that he physically moved himself towards Jack? That he changed sides and he wanted to not smoke. Jack, how did you feel when he moved next to you? Um, I felt stronger. Did anyone notice anything about the way he stood? He stood the way he stood. You noticed that he stood in a kind of very firm, positive way. In other words, he kind of literally stood his ground, didn't he? Why do we think it is important to role play some situations, Lauren? Um, so you get a chance what it's going to be like in the real world if it's like that people persuading you to smoke. We would like to see them be their own person and do things because they believe they were right and that they were a choice.